Hi there, this is Solitary Owner from Solitary Owner Films and welcome to our Rand Review. Today's Rand Review comes from 1979 and yes, it's another Hideo Gosha Tatsu and Akadai collaboration. It's Hunter in the Dark. Um, this is another top class Gosha. Um, I'm going to have to use my notes though. Because it does have a ridiculous cast um, outside of Nakadai. Um, really, the actual star of the film is um, Yoshia Harada, who plays a one eyed um, assassin who can't remember his past, but as the film. Um, unfolds obviously we'll get to learn about his past um, it also stars Eseo Natsuyagi who was in Gosha Samurai Wolf 1 and 2 and he's been in other Gosha films um, Keiu Matsu who's in um, a few of the baby cart films and again you'll probably recognise or recognise all these actors really Sonny Chiba is in it um, Tatsuya Yumenga, who was in lots of Fukasaku films. Um, Tatsuro Tamba, with his 302 films under his belt. Obviously you'll recognise him as well. Um, Koji Yakusho, who was in lots of... A young Koji Yakusho, who was um, in lots of Kiyoshi Kurosawa films. And he's in Perfect Days, the Vim Vendors film that's just out. Um, Mikio Narita, Yoshia Kato, Ijiro T Tono, Kurosawa regulars and just regulars of Japanese cinema um, of the 50s and 60s and 70s. So there's a whole host of um, regular faces and recognisable faces. It's another film with four um, female characters whose names all start with O. I'm sure I did another film. Um, I think it might have been Shiro Toyoda's Illusion of Blood with Akadai that had four female characters whose names all start with O. Um, so we've got Omon, Oria, Oren, and Saki in this film. Because um, the women in this film, unlike quite a lot of samurai films, um, they actually have lots to do in this. Um, again, with Gosha, the story and plot isn't really that important. Again, you know, if you watch enough of these films, they're generally all about the same sort of thing. Um, so, Hunter in the Dark is about the underworld, um, and there's a fight for who's going to be the boss of the underworld um, but it's really about usual betrayal loyalty, sacrifice again the code of the samurai um, is wonderful but also at times it's really silly and really stupid and people killing themselves over really trivial things um, but we love it anyway. So the, again, the plot doesn't really matter, let's be honest. Um, again, so Nakadai, who becomes the boss of the underworld, hires the one-eyed assassin. Because apparently having one eye makes you a really good assassin. I thought two would be better. Um, but as usual, there's betrayal and um, people switching sides um, and because of that betrayal there's um, 
Nakadai's ex-lover. She wants revenge. Um, you have the female second in command of one of the other underworld bosses that gets killed. Um, so she wants revenge. Um, she's played with gutso, with with guts and gusto, um, by Akeo Matsuo. She takes real pleasure in throwing knives and stabbing people, and um, that's the char character of Orin. She's fantastic, um, but really, with Gosha, as I said, the story and plot. Gosha's never really been that fascinated by or interested in being really tight as far as story is concerned. Um, he's all about kinetics. He's all about um, set pieces and the set pieces in this film are really impressive. If you ever wanted a showdown with Sonny Chiba and Tatsu Nakadai in a chicken farm, um, this is the film for you. Um, but there's a wonderful scene when the one-eyed assassin is barreling his way through walls of a a house um, and limbs are flying um, and getting chopped off. There's a wonderful um, fight in the bathhouse involving several of the women trying to kill the one-eyed assassin. Um, there's just a visceral nature um, to Gosha's work. But the thing that makes Gosha so good is the fact there's still character stuff, um, there's still a heart to the film, believe it or not. Um, the violence in Gosha's films are violent, yes there's limbs getting cut off, yes there's arterial spray every now and again, but he does show the brutality of it. You know, I don't think Gosha films necessarily glorify violence, they show violence as being brutal, um, which it is, so I think Gosha does show violence properly. Um, you know, for me there's no revelling in the violence, um, it does show how devastating the violence is. Um, there are riffs in the story from Okamoto's Samurai Assassin, if you've seen that film. Um, but, again, it's just so enjoyable um, and so fantastic and the cast is just ridiculous. Again, Sonny Chiba, you know, is perhaps more famous for more kind of rambunctious roles, but he's actually quite measured here and serious. Um, and he's, it's one of the best Sonny Chiba performances um, you'll see. Nakadai again is very stoic but you know when he has to um, yell at his underlings he can obviously do that um, and his character has a fairly interesting arc during the film as well. Um, I don't actually know how many Gosha films Nakadai did but it's a few um, so they obviously worked well together um, and again you Gosha's like a lot of Japanese filmmakers, um, partly because of the Japanese architecture, but Gosha's framing and shot composition is exquisite. Um, the use of colour in all of Gosha's colour films is just stunning. From There's a wonderful scene involving fire, which is obviously a nice symbol of being in hell, as quite a lot of the characters are, um, but colourful banners... Um, the production design, um, again it's another film that needs to be on Blu-ray as just about, I mean obviously Three Outlaw Samurai is on Blu-ray and Criterion, that's one of his black and white films, and Samurai Wolf is one and two is on Eureka Blu-ray, but some of these other gauches really deserve to be on Blu-ray because he is just so good um, and as I said it's just a wonderful wonderful film it might not be absolutely top drawer Gosha but it's not far off um, if I gave halves I'd probably give it four and a half out of five 
Um, it is a film though that you think it's over and then it goes a wee bit more and you think okay that's then now and it goes a wee bit over and then just does it another couple of times um, not that I'm complaining because more Gosha is more Gosha, more Nakadai and Sunny Chiba is more Nakadai and Sunny Chiba um, but there's at least about four endings or moments where you could have ended it um, but Gosha just carries on anyway, he's having too much fun um, and you will probably have lots of fun as well because it's just another um, outstanding Gosha and Nakadai um, collaboration so thanks very much for watching this random review of Hunter in the Dark. Again, I didn't want to go too much into the plot. Because, you know, you kind of know what these films are about. It's more about the execution of them. Um, and again, Gosha's set pieces are just wonderful. There's an assassination on a bridge, which is fantastic at the start of the film. And again, there's use of fire. Because um, again, this isn't CG fire. Um, this is 1979. Um, and again, seeing Sonny Chiba in a more kind of serious... Not... It did f funny films or anything, but a more kind of controlled Sonny Chiba makes his performance more powerful, I think. Um, and again, the women in the film are all fantastic as well, and they actually get meaty stuff to do because too often in these kind of films they're just on the sideline or pulling the strings from the sideline whereas they get much more um, visceral and active roles in this film so thanks very much for watching please let me know if you've seen Hunter in the Dark and what you think of it and hopefully you'll join me again for more random reviews some of which may be Hideo Gosha films and Nakadai films but that's just pure coincidence so this is Solitary Ronan from Solitron Films, saying farewell. <laughs>